an international platform, we know that the governing party of South Africa has also the same where we say a better Africa and a better world. I am honored to serve as your program director today as we celebrate the life and legacy of the late giant of the African continent, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. Allow me to take this opportunity once again on behalf of the South African government and its people to extend our deepest condolences to the family, friends, comrades, compatriots of the government of the Republic of Zambia and its citizens on the sad passing of Dr. Kenneth Kaunda on the 17th of June, 2021. May you find solace and strength during this difficult time of mourning and grief, and may you be comforted by the knowledge that we too share in your loss. The words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4 verses, verses uh, 7 reads, and I quote, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith, unquote. Indeed, these words are especially true as it relates to the, this great son of the soil. Dr. Kaunda and his generation of African visionaries and leaders, both men and women, the likes of Ngwame Nkrumah, Petrus Lumumba, Amilcar Cabral, Julius Nyerere, Queen Yawa Asetewa of Ghana, among others, have contributed to the achievement of their generational mission, ensuring the liberation of the African continent from the shackles of colonial oppression and rule. May we, like these previous generations, be diligent in our race. May we keep our eyes on the goal and may we, like Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, finish strong. As a people, we remain eternally grateful for the selfless contribution of the Zambian people to our liberation struggle, and in particular, the courageous leadership role played by Dr. Kaunda, who ensured that Zambia played a direct, extensive, critical, and decisive role in the struggle against apartheid regime in South Africa and the African continent broadly. Without a doubt, the selfless sacrifices and bloodshed of the Zambians who fought alongside ANC Zumkondo Wesizo Battalion in contributing to the liberating, to liberating Africans in the Southern region. Our liberation would have been taken much longer than, than, than was achieved. Thank you, Zambia, for you have sacrificed a great deal in our liberation struggle. We take pride in the long and close political and diplomatic relations we have enjoyed over the years. May the spirit of Dr. Kaunda and Nelson Mandela and Oliver Tambo draw us even closer as we commemorate this outstanding legacy of hope, perseverance, and revolutionary ideology. Let us continue to work together and grow in leaps and bounds as we ensure in our pursuit of the objective of Africa's strategic political and development vision, Agenda 2063, ensuring that we relentlessly advance the project of pan-African unity, integration, development, and solidarity with the oppressed people of the world, including Cuba, Palestine, Western Sahara, Venezuela, among others. May we do so in service to humanity and leave the world a better place. Those were my opening remarks, uh, Chairperson, and without a delay, I would like to then go into uh, the program itself and immediately um, call upon um, the first um, a, a, a speaker. Oh, sorry, the, may we firstly sing the national anthems as is was indicating. The first national anthem to be sung is the South African national anthem which will be followed by the African Union anthem. Africa, <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Um, I will now um, call upon the minister, Minister Nati Mtetwa, Emmanuel Gosinati Mtetwa. Minister Mtetwa is a member of parliament and the current minister of sports, arts and culture. He previously served as minister of arts and culture from 2014 to 2019. Minister of Safety and Security, later known as Minister of Police from 2008 to 2014, and as the Chief Whip of the African National Congress in the National Assembly. 
He's a member of the National Executive Committee of the ANC, member of the ANC National Working Committee, and chairperson of the ANC Subcommittee on Political Education. Minister Mtetwa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, <clears throat> Minister Lindy Wazulu, uh, for your kind introduction. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Meitan Dimdise, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Dr. Nale Dipando, Ministers and Deputy Ministers here present, the Deputy High Commissioner, Wayna Mosapa of Zambia, His Excellency Ambassador Ben Poco, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps in South Africa, the members of the Diplomatic Corps, as a whole, members of Parliament here present, the Chairperson of the National House of Traditional and Koi and San Leaders, Ikosi S.E. Mashangu, members of the provincial legislatures, representatives of sport federations, representatives of entities of government, social cohesion advocates, members of business community here with us, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Compatriots, beloved Africans on the continent, the diaspora and the world, I'm bringing you fraternal greetings from the government and the people of South Africa. We are meeting here to celebrate the life and times of the founding president of Zambia, who passed away on the 17th of June, 2021. On that fateful Thursday, the 17th of June, humanity lost an advocate for peace, social justice, gender equality, and an ambassador for the wretched of the earth in the passing of former President Kenneth David Buchizia Mudeba Kaunda. Subsequent to, the, to Dr. Kenneth Kaunda's demise, the President of the Republic, His Excellency, Madame Elasir Ramaphosa called on the nation to mourn and honor Dr. Kenneth Kaunda for a period of 10 days. The cabinet of the Republic adopted programs that will afford our nation an opportunity to demonstrate its gratitude to this revered African leader. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda was a man, was a man of great discipline and dedication conviction and conscience, as well as humor and humanity. In some ways, he was an old school politician. His philosophical outlook of African humanism was influenced by Mahatma Gandhi's Satyagraha of nonviolent peaceful protest. His background yes. shaped. Oh, I'm fine, thank you very much. How are you? Um, sorry. His background was shaped uh, by the lesson from his parents. His mother was a teacher and father, a reverend. The lesson is about two commandments of the Bible. Love God, the, all, the Lord Almighty, with all your heart, with all your soul, with your entire mind and all your strength, close quote. The second commandment, which informed his world outlook is and I quote, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, close quote. Though Dr. Kenneth Kaunda's philosophy was a nonviolent one, he at the same time supported those who chose armed resistance as a legitimate pillar of struggle. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda made it abundantly clear that Zambia's support and participation in the liberation struggle was not based on a desire to make social, economic, and political investments. Rather, it was simply doing what was morally correct and therefore 
should not concern themselves with the question whether or not there would be eventual rewards for the Zambian sacrifices. Under his leadership, the people of Zambia opened their country to those who were fleeing from oppression and hosted leaders of liberation movements. This came at enormous cost because of their difficult geographical situation. South Africa, like many of the frontline states, owes her freedom and independence to this gallant state, statesman, a jovial man, a creative worker, a sportsman, and above all, a true and sincere African liberator. The most well-regarded legacies of Zambia, which is not commonly known or spoken about, is that Zambia has also been the country of residence for more future presidents of African countries than have been produced by any other country in Africa. And amongst, amongst others, is the late President Milton Obote of Uganda, the late President Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, all the three presidents of Namibia, President Tabombegi of South Africa, President Bingo Mutarika of Malawi, President Jacob Zuma of South Africa, President Emerson Mnangagwa of Zimbabwe. The following second in command of their states are the late Vice President Joshua Ngomo of Zimbabwe and Deputy President Balega Mbete of South Africa. Whilst he was never president of state, it is worth mentioning the great Oliver Reginald Tambo, the ANC's longest serving president since its formation 100 years ago, and who oversaw it through its most difficult period, also lived in Zambia. Dr. Kaunda commanded respect and admiration amongst his peers all round, as shown by the frontline states. He was elected as chairman of the Frontline State Summit, succeeding Mualimu Julius Kambarake Nyerere, president of Tanzania, who was leaving the presidency of Tanzania. Displaying humil humility to his predecessor, Dr. KK said to the summit, and I quote, thank you for the honor you accorded me as well as my country, Zambia. But please remember there can only be one Julius Nyerere. Close quote. In response to Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, the late president of Mozambique, President Samora Machel thanked Dr. Kaunda for accepting to be elected as chairman. He further said, and I quote, yes, President Kaunda has said there can only be one Julius Nyerere. And we also know that there can only be one Kenneth Kaunda, close quote. Such was the confidence Dr. Kenneth Kaunda enjoyed from amongst other leaders. In international platforms, Dr. Kaunda always expressed his determination to fight for the freedom of all oppressed African nations and all other nations of the world. In his first address to the United Nations General Assembly, after the independence of Zambia in 1964, Dr. Kaunda said, and I quote, today, even in our jubilation, I weep still. I say to our brothers of South Africa, of Southern Rhodesia and the Portuguese territories, today we weep for you. We do not forget you in the day of our triumph, close quote. Dr. Kaunda spelled out Zambia's world outlook and likened it with that of the late president of the United States of America, Jeff K who said in 1962, our basic goal remains the same, a peaceful world, community of free and independent states, free to choose their future and their own system, so long as it does not threaten the freedom of others, close quote. Nothing will erase Dr. Kaunda's legacy, a great leader who fought for the defense of peace, independence and security in Africa and the world over. Farewell to a patriotic Zambian, a dedicated Pan-Africanist, a citizen of the world whose mission on planet Earth was unity to humanity. This, this is aptly captured by his fa favorite song, 
he say he, he produced and sang with passion as a the program director ministers who has referred to the end pamozi nimundima umo which means let us have one heart one spirit we work together so that we can develop if you have different opinions you can't achieve the right goals that was the late founding president of zambia dr kenneth Buchizia mutepa kauna who actually loved his african names the first one Buchizia, meaning the unexpected one one zambia one nation thank you for your attention Thank you very much, Minister Natim Ntetwa. Indeed, a farewell to a patriotic Zambia, a very farewell to the entire African continent. And may I take the opportunity also, Minister Ntetwa, to say a history that has to be written by us, a history that has to be told by us, a history that still needs to be appreciated by the young people of today in Zambia, in South Africa, in SADC, and the rest of the African continent. Without any waste of time, may I take the opportunity now to call upon the Deputy High Commissioner, Mr. Maynard Misipa, to give his remarks. Over to you. Good morning, everybody. I am Maynard Misipa representing His Excellency Major General Jackson Miti, LTD Zambia High Commissioner in South Africa. His Excellency Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa, Dr. Naledi Pando, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Mr. Emmanuel, Konsinati Mutetwa, Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture. Ambassador Bene Mpoko, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps in South Africa. Ms. Tandi Modize, Speaker of the National Assembly. Ministers, Premiers, Members of the Executive Council, MEC, Mayors and other elected representatives representatives of organizations of civil society, leaders of the public administration, distinguished participants at this commemoration, comrades and fellow mourners. Kind allow me on behalf of the government of the Republic of Zambia and the people of Zambia to express gratitude to His Excellency, Mr. Cyril, Matamela Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa and government as well as the people of the South Africa for according befitting tributes to Dr. Kenneth David Uchizia Kaunda, the first president of Zambia, fondly known as KK, who was not only a leader and an inspiration of both the people of Zambia and continent, but was also a true gallant statesman, a cheerful man, a musician, a sportsman, and a sincere African liberator. Following the passing of Dr. Kaunda at the age of 97, on 17th June 2021, who was born on 28th April 1924 at Lubwa Mission in Chinsali, in what was then Northern Rhodesia, Zambia. The South African government declared a period of mourning for 10 days with the national flag flying at half mast at all flag stations and other memorial events in his honor. We are grateful. 
under President Kaunda, Zambia's foreign policy was shaped by three ideological principles or values, humanism, pan-Africanism, and positive non-alignment. Humanism advocated the establishment of a social order based on racial equality and respect. It was developed by Dr. Kaunda in direct response to the racialism, racial inequality, and conflict, both domestically and in the region. In 1950, Dr. Kaunda entered politics as an organizer, quickly rose to the forefront of the anti-colonial freedom struggle. And in 1960, he emerged as president of the United Nations Independence Party, UNIP. This struggle against the oppressors was informed by a couple of experiences of discrimination. Notable among other experiences was that Africans were not allowed to enter the European shops by the front door. If they wanted anything, they had to go through the hall on the wall. Thus, at the age of 25, he began a successful nonviolent campaign against operation, riding on his bicycles and with his guitar hung across his neck, went about singing freedom songs. At independence in October 1964, only three of Zambia's neighbors, Malawi, Tanzania, and the Democratic Congo, RDC, DRC, then known as Zaire, had attained political independence. As such, Zambia resolved to embark on the liberation of South African and the continent at large. Dr. Kaunda affirmed this resolve by the foreign policy declaration proclaimed in Lusaka to the National Council of East then ruling party, the United Nations Independence Party, UNIP, on 26th April, 1966, where he pronounced, Zambia will not be independent and free until the rest of Africa is free. Due to Dr. Kaunda's strong belief in continental cooperation, he advocated the need for unity of the liberation movements in individual countries. As a result of this, at one time, Zambia hosted several liberation movements, including opposition parties, the African National Congress, ANC of South Africa, Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, PAC, Azania People's Organization, Azapo, Black Consciousness Movement of South Africa, BCMSA, Unity Movement for Freedom of South Africa, UMFSA, Zimbabwe African People's Union, ZAP, Zimbabwe African National Union, ZAN, the Front for the Liberation of Zimbabwe, Flores, Southwest African Political Organization, SWAPO, Frinte, the Libateco, the Mozambique, Florimo, People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola, MPLA, and the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA. Further, the ANCS Radio Freedom was allowed to broadcast from Lusaka. It was also under Dr. Kaunda's tenure that the ANC and other South African liberation movements were able to wage their armed struggles. Despite Zambia being exposed to numerous attacks and reprisal by white-ruled South African Rhodesia and South Africa, 
Dr. Kaunda did not relent in his quest for an independent continent. Dr. Kaunda will be remembered for his outstanding leadership in the formation of the Nane Aligned Movement, NAM, amid aggressive controversy between the Western and Eastern blocs during the Cold War of the mid 1990s to the early 1990s. In this regard, he served as the chair of several important African organizations from the Pan African Movement for East, Central, and South Africa, PAFMECSA, the Organization of African Unity, OAU, and the, the frontline states. Dr. Kaunda, being a good natured comrade of the South Africa liberation struggle, he was close to veterans of the liberation movement, such as the late Oliver Tambo, Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Chris Honey, former president, president Mr. Tabombeki, and Mr. Jacob Zuma, among others. Retiring from active politics, particularly since 1991, Dr. Kaunda was involved in various charities. He founded the Kenneth Kaunda Peace Foundation, which is dedicated to the establishment of peace and conflict resolution on the continent and devoted his life in fighting HIV and AIDS in Africa. In the spirit of Dr. Kaunda's Pan-Africanism, let us all endeavor to realize a united continent by enhancing among them our political, socioeconomic, trade, and health fronts. Excellencies, on behalf of the Zambian government and the people of Zambia, I wish to thank you again for this invitation to participate in celebrating the life of our founding father. May God bless us all during and beyond the, the COVID-19 pandemic. I thank you all. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Deputy High Commissioner. Indeed, uh, when you started counting on the liberation movements that were welcomed in Zambia, you take me very far when you talk about ANC, you talk about PAC, uh, you talk about Azapo and all. That's how the ANC used to be called in Zambia during our time, the ANC. But thank you very much also for your remarks that remind us as Africans that as we celebrate this great son of the soil, <clears throat> we have to realize a united continent. We have to realize a continent that takes care of its people, both at political, economic, and social, but more so social well-being of the people of the African continent. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Uh, up next, I would like um, to call upon uh, Ambassador Bene Mpoko, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps in South Africa, also an ambassador and a man that one has known for a long time in South Africa, one that has represented his nation, but also represented the African continent in relation to the ambassadors who are here today. Ambassador Mpoko served 17 years in international banking with Citibank and Chase Manhattan Bank respectively. He initially arrived in South Africa in January 1995 to establish the United Nations Development Program, UNDP office in Pretoria and was appointed DRC ambassador to South Africa in 2001. 
being the longest serving ambassador in South Africa, he became the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps in 2011. Ambassador Mpoko, my brother, the floor is yours and thank you. Thank you, uh, Program Director, uh, Honorable Lindiwe Zulu, my dear sister who I've known for forever, <laughs> uh, and uh, Minister of uh, Social Development. Uh, Honorable Tandi Modise, Speaker of the South African National Assembly. Uh, Honorable Dr. Nalendi Pando, South African Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. Honorable Ntanti Ntetwa, Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture. Uh, my dear brother, the Deputy Commissioner of uh, Zambia, High Commission. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are gathered here today to pay tribute to a great man the late President Kenneth Kaunda. That great man was a liberation icon, the father of the Zambia independence. But he didn't limit his struggle for the liberation and independence of the Federation of Rhodesia, uh, uh, Nyasaland. He extended the whole fight against colonialism, uh, uh, toward the Southern African region and to the continent of Africa. As we heard earlier, he carried his fight around the world. He was very involved in the liberation of those who were oppressed. It didn't matter which continent he was involved. He did all this because he believed that no one is free until everyone is free. So throughout his career, throughout his life, he taught us a lot of lessons. As mentioned earlier, his parents were teachers, but he became a teacher himself. Not only a classroom teacher, but a teacher in the area of a liberation movement. The biggest lessons we can learn from his experience. First, he did all that with a sense of humility. The late President Kaunda was a very simple man, very humble man, but with a strong sense of commitment, a strong sense of achievement, to a point where when he put his goal, he determined his goal, he pursued them to make sure he, he reached his objectives. After Zambia independence in 1964, he showed one of his qualities, which was a sense of reconciliation, because he asked the white settlers to stay and work with the Zambians in the new Zambia. He also turned around and asked his fellow Zambians to work together and to, especially to avoid the trauma of a tribal wars. Hence the slogan of one Zambia, one people. He tried very hard to avoid what we have experienced in other African countries. That is, after independence, we turned the guns and the fight against each other. And this, President Kaunda thought it was not acceptable. After independence, we were supposed to work together toward the same goals. We can disagree in terms of the way forward, but it doesn't mean we had to fight each other. So he fought very hard to make sure that we reconcile each other. We look in the same direction, even, even if we disagree, to reach our main objective, was, which was economic development. 
fight against unemployment, and poverty, and so forth. So we can use these lessons today to guide us toward a peaceful continent, a committed com com uh, 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 continent towards the objectives of economic development and the fight against the poverty. We don't gain by turning the guns against each other as we are pursuing the development goals. Just because we disagree, it doesn't mean we could become our enemies. Those are some of the lessons that I think we, we have learned and we can, to the extent possible, implement. Because these are the lessons we learned from the, uh, the outcome which we are uh, celebrating today, what's the prison counter of Zambia. He, as I said, he did everything with a sense of humility. And that sense of humility became his, 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 a, a power tool for him. That's why he attracted everybody. We all went to him for advice. Even my own country, when we were facing a, a, a difficulty in terms of putting the, a, a, a government together, putting a country together, and so forth, we went to him. And he shows us the way, how to reconcile ourselves, how to work together. So he was an icon, he was an example for the national reconciliation, for unity, and so forth. Now the challenge is, as we celebrate him today, what are the lessons that we can incorporate into our own behavior today? What are the lessons we can learn that we can incorporate into our policy uh, uh, decision making process so that it will continue to have an impact on our today's life, although he's no longer with us. That's the main challenge. It's, it's, it's not sufficient to praise somebody who did a good thing, but how do we inspire ourselves so that we emulate the lessons that he taught us? I think, ladies and gentlemen, that's a main challenge as we celebrate the life of the African icon. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, um, Ambassador Mpoko. Thank you very much for that very strong message. Thank you very much for tracing back the liberation, the freedom from colonialism. And thank you very much for indicating also that the late uh, President K.K. Kaunda did not limit the struggle only to his surroundings, but he made sure that beyond the borders, the freedom out of colonialism and development for the African continent was not only about Zambia, but the entire continent, not even only about SADC, the region, but the entire continent. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for reminding us that what is in front of us is the future of the African people and the fact that if we happen to have any disagreements does not mean that we are enemies and that goes country to country, that goes across the entire continent. The lessons that we need to learn from Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, not only from a liberation of South Africa, but governance and governing in our different countries. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now an honor for me to then request the organizers that they then uh, show the clip, the award of the Order of the Champions of O.R. Tambo to Dr. Kenneth Kaunda by His Excellency and former President Tabo Mbegi. The Order of the Companions of O.R. Tambo, the revolutionary thinker, humanist and mentor of our nation, leader par excellence. As companions, we pondered in silence and wonderment, watching the friend and protector, Majola, visiting the newborn generation. On this occasion, the world is with us in support, guaranteeing that we shall win. In remembrance of O.R., the Moses of our nation, who led us with his encouraging teachings and moral guidance 
into the promised land. We honor your spirit as Majola safeguards the young and vulnerable of our society, preparing the vulnerable child for a successful and safe adulthood. President of the ANC for more than 30 years. With this in mind, the Order of Companions of O.R. Tambo is bestowed on individuals who have actively expressed solidarity, support, and encouragement towards the young and growing members of the human race. Under the powers vested in me by Section 84 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996, Act 108 of 1996, I now confer the order of the companions of Owar Tambo on the late Mahatma Gandhi, the late Olof Palme, Kenneth David Kaunda, and thereby admit them to the order of the companions of Owar Tambo they shall henceforth be honored as esteemed members of the order. The people of South Africa salute them all. Pray silence for the arrival of Kenneth David Kaunda. Order of the Supreme Companions of O.R. Tambo in Gold, awarded to Kenneth David Kaunda for exceptional leadership and statesmanship, outstanding contribution in the struggle against apartheid, and for promoting justice and peace in the Southern African region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, technical people. Thank you very much uh, for that inspiring uh, clip. To the young people, we say to you, Amanda Agini, to the young people, the person we are celebrating today uh, did what was expected of him. He lived for liberation. The people that he has gone to join, O Artambo, Albertina Sisulu, Winnie Matigizela Mandela, and many others, I'm sure they have welcomed him and he is resting in peace. It is our task and our duty to make sure that we continue the struggle, the struggle of a different type now, the struggle for economic emancipation, the struggle for the empowerment of women, the struggle for young people, the struggle that must enable and ensure that our people live in peace, security, and stability. At this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, everyone who has joined on the platform, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce none other than MP, Speaker of the National Assembly in the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa, a sister, a comrade, one that we have worked with in this long journey 
of Liberation, Ms. Tandi Mudise. Mudise is the current Speaker of the National Assembly in the sixth administration. She was the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, NCOP, during the fifth democratic parliament. She has also been a speaker of the Northwest Provincial Legislature from 2004 to 2009 and premier of the Northwest from 2010 to 2014. Ms. Mudisa serves as a member of the ANC National Executive Committee. Over to you, my dear sister. Program director, my sister, Lindy. The president in his absence, ministers, deputy ministers, the diplomatic corps, members of parliament, South Africans and Africans. On behalf of our parliament, we join all the people across our country and our continent and the world to mourn, but also to celebrate Dr. Kenneth Gowdy. We do so through you, High Commissioner Masita, Deputy High Commissioner Masita, to send our condolences to the family of Kaunda and to the people of Zambia. To say to them, Akushanga Lunga Shanga, Moyahabo Kimusela did. We celebrate this great leader, our father, not a Zambian, but an African because his going has been a great loss. But when you lose somebody like KK to death, you get enriched emotionally. You get proud that at some point in the corner of your life, you met this great person and you took away lessons. And therefore we shall forever be grateful. The parliament of South Africa as it is structured today, can only be grateful to one Kenneth Kaunda because we know that amongst the multitudes of people who got refuge, South Africa, all the political affiliations that were opposed to apartheid, got harbored and protected in Zambia. And therefore, as parliament, we are saddened, but we are also part of those who are very proud to continue with what KK said before us. Indeed, Dr. Gaunda was a son of a preacher. He was strong against the discrimination and injustice, but gentle and supportive to the needy and to the homeless. He risks his family, his country, to offer us who had to still struggle to ensure that their agenda with his friends, whether they had ever met or not, I don't know, but his friends would be the greats like Bukwam and Kuruma. He definitely worked alongside with Julius Nyerere and their project was the total liberation of Africa. And that project is a project that we must see to conclusion. We want to say that none of us in Southern Africa can say we have no relationship with Dr. Kenneth Gowdy. He was our father, he was our grandfather. He was our artist, he was our mentor. He showed us what it is to be a neighbor, to be a father and to be a mother. So we will eternally be grateful to him and to the people of Zambia. We do know how many planes of the South African apartheid regime rained death on the people of Zambia and the, our other progressive neighbors. We do remember what hardships as South Africans we put you through. And through this great man, we have always had cause to say thank you and thank you once again. Now, Oliver Tambo, at the 75th anniversary of the ANC in Lusaka, eloquently described KK as the 
exponent and defender of liberation, not only of Southern Africa, but of Africa. And I think that that description is apt and that Dr. KK lived this description until he took his last breath. I am confident that I represent the diverse political views across the benches of parliament when I say that we can never fully recognize the contributions of this unrelate, unrelenting freedom fighter and of the Zambian people. I believe the best we can do to mark this outstanding life is to ensure that Africa unites, Africa prospers in health, in peace, that we grow our wealth to benefit our own continent. Otherwise, project total liberation will be fruitless. I believe that the fight for human dignity and development, the fight against racism and tribalism, the increased focus on the recognition and protection of lives and rights must remain our focus in this continent in honor of one Kenneth Gaunda. Dr. KK joins our fathers, Mutambo, Bumandela, Busisulu. He joins our mothers, Bo Dr. Ruth, whom I first met through. Bumakleke, Bumasisu. Perhaps if we are real Africans, and we believe that we do have these people who are gone to the beyond. They will join us and continue to push us as South Africans and Zambians to follow in the right steps of these, our great leaders, to always choose the straight and narrow, to always do as parliament what we would be expected to do, to represent our people properly. And I want to say that from all the fronts, these leaders taught us to lead, not only from the front, but from the front, and sometimes from the middle, to ensure that we do and we protect the right things. Our father always held that white handkerchief, a sign of cleanliness, a sign of peace. I've always referred to him as that big, big black, African men of Africa who wages peace. Let us wage peace. Let us wage development in order of our fight. His love of music, his nimble dancing moves, that glint in his eyes must continue to inspire us and our children to create the arts and therefore to create happiness to create equality to communicate, because that is what artists do. They communicate sometimes the most difficult messages in the most easiest and enjoyable way. We shall surely miss that singing voice of KK. We must also say he was a strong man, but he was not afraid to deal with issues of peace, and therefore, in the name of Kenneth Kaunda, we must say to the strong men of Africa, please change. You are disturbing Project Total Liberation. Please change, because Sadak needs to unite. Please change, because we do not appreciate these weapons that you train against us, the helpless women and children. Please change. Because we want to appreciate the weapons that Kaunda used better. The guitar, the song, the dance move, the cuddling, the honesty in speech, the honesty in leading. Africa suffers from bad governance. Is that what our leaders would have wanted us to do? No, 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 no. And therefore, we want to commit as a South African parliament that we are intent on working the straight and the narrow in order of this hero of our people and our continent. We want to say that a protector of freedom 
a fighter, a recognizer of the vulnerables, is somebody whose name we do not want to sully. And therefore, if tomorrow our great grandchildren and born come up, they must find that we have kept this name clean, we have kept this name hallowed, we can hand it over to our great grandchildren so that the name of one Dr. Kenneth Gawinda never dies in the memory of this continent. As Parliament, we liaise with our sister parliaments. We are alive to the responsibility that as Parliament we must carry to ensure that not only are people in our own home countries safe, in the regions they must be safe. And therefore we call on you the diplomatic course, we call on you the executive to hurry up already and enable us to launch a fully fledged regional parliament. It is a shame because this region, this country hosts the Pan-African parliament, but we have not progressed to where we have a fully fledged regional parliament. And what is the hiccup? It is not that our countries are scared that we will make laws. We make model laws which we are not imposing on each other. We make model laws which look at the commonalities amongst ourselves. But we need this parliament to integrate the region so that even our voices are better integrated when we get to the Pan-African Parliament. And therefore, we would say that in the name of Gawunda, we would beg that you do what is right, you help us to do this. We need to understand that the liberation of the African people, the killing off of the um, unconscious hatred, distaste, and sometimes outright contempt of fellow Africans amongst us in our different countries increases when we are not opening up our borders, our hearts, when we are not doing the necessary to integrate our people properly, when we are not ensuring that we hold hands as the region to make sure that economic development happens evenly so that we don't need to create an ease and unsafe conditions in each other's countries. In the name of Gaunda, can we go back to this business of ensuring that we are at home? We are one region. We are one continent. We are one people. So as South Africa, we would want to see the Pan-African Parliament doing its work, making sure that it marshals the resources. It oversees the resources on behalf of the people of the continent. It does what liberation is all about. Total liberation covering every corner and aspect of the life of that constituency that cannot do anything for itself. Equality in health, equality in, in education, the ability to move, the ability to use your identity without fear, the ability to own your culture, the ability to sing to any song in any part of Africa and accept that you are an African. So we say in the name of our Father, enable us to do this job as parliaments of Africa. Enable us to hold the names of our mothers, our fathers, the names of KK and all those great ones, Bunyerere, in high esteem because only when we do that integration of people to people, only when then will we be able to do that which we want to do, the economic recognition of the muscle that Africa has, the manufacturing capacity of Africa, the consuming of African uh, uh, products across the, 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 the continent, so that we can then stand as Africans and say, in the name of Gawunda, in the name of Nyerere, in the name of Tambo, we are united indeed. And we know that our children will inherit a continent that is dignified, that enjoy its resources and riches, 
that does not allow things that come from the past to divide us. Then if we do this, we believe as parliaments, we will begin to see truly and surely total liberation. One continent, one people is achieved. And I want to say that in these then, the thousands of those who have died fighting for liberation in these countries, some of whom have grown up, aged, living in Zambia, will be with us. Let us wage war on poverty, on discrimination, on ethnicity, on racism, on gender-based violence in the name of Gaunda. Let us sing the song that unites us as a people. And I want to say that um, we will miss this our father, but we do know that wherever they are, they will be looking at us. And I thank you, uh, Honorable Minister, the program director. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Comrade uh, Mudise. Thank you very much for your words of encouragement, but also your words of raising the real key issues that confront us as Africans in the continent, but also that confront us in particular as a region. Thank you for reminding us also about the role of the Pan-African Parliament. And thank you for taking us back to who KK Kawunda was. I like you when you talk about the glint in his eyes. And I'm sure that many of those who are probably watching today, those who had the experience to see him for the first time uh, when, he, uh, when he received our former president, Nelson Mandela Holisasa, when he, was, he arrived in Lusaka, 1990, I was again one of those children who were watching that unfold. And here we are today through their sacrifices, we have been able to be in, on this platform and be able to speak at this very important memorial service, a tribute to the life of Dr. Kenneth Kawunda. At this point in time, and I'm hoping that the technical team is ready with a message that is supposed to be flighted from none other than the President of the Republic of South Africa, President Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa. I ask that you flight uh, that message, please. South Africa joins the people of Zambia and all the peoples on our continent in mourning the passing of our great leader and father, the father of liberation in our region, Sadek. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda was a loyal friend of the people of South Africa. He stood by us during our long and bitter struggle against the oppressive apartheid government. Even as the brutal apartheid regime sought to wreak havoc in the frontline states in its efforts to destroy the liberation movement, Dr. Kaunda stood firm and never wavered in his support for the people of South Africa and the people of our region. Zambia provided us with the material and moral support and gave refuge to our leaders and those who had been forced into exile from our country. The people of Zambia embraced us as South Africans. And today we view Zambia as our second home. Zambia took us into its bosom and gave us sustenance 
during the very difficult days of our struggle. So South Africa is grateful for the support we received from Zambia and especially our leader, Dr. Kenneth Gaunda. We will never be able to pay the debt that we owe you. And all we can say is thank you, thank you, thank you for all you have done for us to be a free people today. <laughs> South Africa is grateful that we could acknowledge Dr. Kaunda's great role in our struggle for freedom during his lifetime. In 2002, he was bestowed with one of our highest national orders, the Order of the Companions of Oliver Reginald Tambo in gold. Reginald Tambo be, having been his great friend over many, many years. He was also the first head of state in our region to receive Nelson Mandela in 1990 after he was released. Nelson Mandela, the father of our nation in South Africa, felt duty bound that he should undertake his first visit outside our country after 27 years of incarceration to Zambia to come and personally thank Dr. Kenneth Kaunda for the friendship, but also for the support that the African National Congress received from Dr. Kaunda and Zambia. Today is the passing of an era. Dr. Kaunda was the last surviving leader of the generation who lit the path to Africa's freedom from colonial misrule. He has left us, but we know that what he stood for, the standard of leadership he set, and his progressive ideals will continue to live on. He was a man of all seasons. As a freedom fighter, he led the liberation movement to victory and to independence. As a president, he led with humility and selflessness. He walked amongst the people. He refused to surround himself with the trappings of power and influence. And this is what we can learn from him. He was a man of extraordinary empathy. He was often driven to tears of compassion against injustice. He was an elder statesman who, even after leaving office, continued to play an important role in national life, advocating for important causes such as HIV AIDS, peace and conflict resolution. He was a long, li lifelong Pan-Africanist who worked to advance African unity and integration. He loved young people. He wrote of how being among the youth always filled him with humility and respect. He called on Africa's youth to work hard to reject lives of idleness and vice and to be part of nation building, saying, the fate of this country is in their hands. He was also a champion of African self-reliance. We draw strength and inspiration for this now more than ever as we find ourselves 
in the grip of a deadly pandemic, COVID-19. He would be proud to see us working together as African leaders to bring a recovery to our continent that is rooted in compassion and human dignity. Like the mighty and noble African fish eagle that adorns the national flag of Zambia, Comrade KK, as we fondly call him, has soared into the sunset. He has left a Zambia that is proud and free. He has left one Zambia, one nation. He has left an Africa that is united and strong. In taking forward his legacy, let it be that Dr. Gaunda's teachings on compassion, empathy, and dignity are Africa's gift to humanity. And that, in the words of one of South Africa's iconic leaders, Steve Bantubiko, who said it is we, the peoples of Africa, who bestow on the world a more human face. And it was Dr. Kaunda who did indeed bestow that human face on humanity. Diende Pamozi Nimuntima Umo. Let us go forward together, one heart, one spirit, united. And let us go forward for equality, for justice, for human prosperity and for a better Africa and a better world. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I am apologizing because the technology just failed me a, a few uh, moments, so I could not unmute. That having been said, thank you very much for that clip of the president, President Cyril Ramaphosa, indicating clearly that the late KK walked amongst the people. And I think what is also a very important message is that he loved young people. We call it fountain of youth. And therefore, if he loved of young people to steep themselves in the history of Dr. Kenneth Kawunda and learn the lessons from his life in preparing themselves for the future. President also indicated that President Kenneth Kaunda left a Zambia that is proud and free. He also spoke about the importance of empathy, the importance of dignity, and said this is a gift from Africa to all um, humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, it is always a pleasure uh, for me an absolute pride at all times to introduce women of South Africa who have stood the test of time from Tandi Mudise, who I introduced earlier, to the one I'm about to introduce now, the women who have taken South Africa to the next level in leading not only from the liberation struggle, but also 
in leading during the time of building a democratic South Africa, of building institutions of governance, of building the future, the future having been made yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It is my honor to now introduce Dr. Naledi Pando, MP and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. Dr. Naledi Pando is South Africa's Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. She became a member of parliament in 1994, deputy chief whip in the National Assembly from 1995 to 1998, deputy chairperson of the National Council of Provinces in 1998, and is chairperson from 1999 to 2004. She served in cabinet as Minister of Education 2004-2009, Minister of Science and Technology 2009-2012, and Minister uh, of Home Affairs 2012-2014, Minister of Science and Technology 2014-2018, and Minister of Higher Education and Training 2018-2019. I'm hoping that the young people who are on this platform will take their time to really look at the illustrious history of all the people that spoke here today, not for nothing else, but for purposes of learning and sharpening their own future. It's my honor to call upon Minister Naledi Pando to please take the floor. While Minister Naledi is uh, coming through, I do want um, to make the point that Minister Naledi is delivering concluding remarks. Thank you very much, Program Director, Minister of Social Development of South Africa, Minister Lindy Zulu, His Excellency, President of the Republic of South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa, the Speaker of the National Assembly of the Parliament of South Africa, Ms. Tandi Modise, Minister Natim Tetwa, His Excellency Ambassador Mpoko, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps in South Africa, His Excellency Mr. Maynard Masipa, representing the High Commissioner of Zambia to South Africa, Excellencies, senior officials, comrades, and fellow mourners. All speakers before me have succinctly reminded us of the important role that the late President Kenneth Kaunda played in the liberation of South Africa and the broader struggle against colonialism in Africa and on the globe. I shall certainly repeat some of what has been said and am comforted knowing that, that that which is good is worthy of reiteration. President Kaunda's internationalism and Pan-African activism was evident even before he became the first president of an independent and democratic Zambia. Hence in 1963, President Kaunda was elected as a leader of the Pan-African movement for East, Central and Southern Africa and used this platform to amplify the decolonization agenda on the continent and in the international arena. This commitment to ending colonial subjugation of Africans became central to his role as the first president of a free Zambia. As stated by Musa Faki Muhammad, the chairperson of the African Union at an AU memorial in remembrance of President Kaunda, the chairperson indicated that President Kaunda placed the people of Zambia and Zambia in the firing line of the government of apartheid South Africa and of other countries seeking to hold on to the privileges of empire on the African continent. He did this through his unwavering support for African liberation movements, including 
through providing them sanctuary in Zambia. This of course included, as has been said, the African National Congress of South Africa and the Pan-African Congress of South Africa. The previous speakers have affirmed President Kaunda's legacy as a freedom fighter, but it is also imperative that we should remember his roles as an educator and as a public health activist. President Kaunda was a teacher and also later became the chancellor of the University of Zambia. He saw education as indispensable to building post-colonial Zambia and other post-colonial African countries. In 2002, he was nominated to be the Balfour African President in Residence at Boston University in the United States of America. It's also important for us to recall that he was an alumnus of Forte University in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. President Kaunda, just as with President Mandela, lost a child to AIDS. His son, Masuzo, succumbed to HIV in 1986. This experience, as was the case with President Nelson Mandela, helped inform President Kaunda's role as a global health policy activist. President Kaunda worked tirelessly to fight the stigma associated with HIV and AIDS and was an advocate for access to treatment for those infected with the virus. I have no doubt that in our fight for ac access to vaccines for the fight against the pandemic today, President Kaunda would have been on the front line of that fight. Therefore, as we celebrate his life and his achievements, let us ensure that we complete what he and his great friend, President Mandela aimed for. That is an Africa that has the capacities to produce its own life-saving medication and not to be dependent on a few companies in a few countries to have access to the life-saving medication that Africa and the world requires. If we do nothing else, let us free Africa from being at the end of the health queue. Let us honor President Kaunda by ensuring that we all support the role that President Ramaphosa has taken on as the vaccines champion for the African Union. This includes all of us as political parties and public representatives on the African continent loudly and visibly calling for an end to vaccine nationalism, calling for the equitable distribution of vaccines and supporting initiatives that finally free us, that will enable local production as we work toward ending the ravages of COVID-19. For after all, the life ethos of President Kaunda was about us depending on ourselves, was about us being free from forced reliance on others. Winning such a battle will be a fitting tribute to President Kaunda, the health activist at a time when Africa and the world faces an unprecedented health crisis due to this pandemic of COVID-19. I'd like to ask all of you as we conclude, if you have a white handkerchief close by you, take it out and wave it in celebration of this icon's legacy. President Kaunda reiterated many times that his ever-present white handkerchief symbolized love and peace. 
And given the times we are in, we all need some love. We all need some peace. We in South Africa, Africa and the world, we thank the people of Zambia and the Kaunda family for sharing President Kaunda, the freedom fighter, the educator, and the health activist amongst his many attributes with all of us. We will remain grateful for his contribution to the freedom of all South Africans and the opportunity to celebrate his legacy in a democratic parliament. As has been said by all the previous speakers, let us put his commitment and sacrifice to the good. Let us ensure that a free Africa, a liberated Africa, an able Africa rises from the foundation laid by President Kaunda. Indeed, we enjoy political freedom today, but we must enjoy scientific freedom. We must enjoy economic freedom. We must enjoy education liberation. We must enjoy the ability for Africa to do for itself and to do the right things. Yes, our legislatures must advance oversight, but they must advance development as well. They must examine every project. They must examine every initiative. But also we must ensure that all of us as public representatives are free of deceit, are free of corruption, are ethical, that as we pass on, as we leave office, we do as President Kaunda did, leave it with just that which we earned and no more than that. Let us live those ideals. Let us live those attributes. Let us live those values. President Kaunda, we celebrate you today. We must live on the foundation that you have built. We ask that you rest in peace. We ask that we continue to live your legacy in honor of you. Rest in peace. Lalangu Paul. Thank you, Program Director. You are muted, Program Director. Thank you very much, um, Minister Naledi Pando. Thank you very much for your kind words. We ask that he rests in peace and we ask that we continue with the good work that we did. Without any waste of time, ladies and gentlemen, may I please ask the operators again to display the slides of pictures of Dr. Kenneth Kawunda. And we have come to the end of this very important and a respect to a leader, to a father, to one that brought life itself in relation to our liberation struggle. I thank you all. We're almost done. We can just maybe remain to watch the slides as they flighted. Thank you very much, Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Natin Tetwa, all other uh, important people who joined um, this important goodbye to the late President Kenneth Kawunda. May I buy bow out and allow the slides to be shown. Thank you very much, ministers. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I thank you.
afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon, Mamo. Afternoon, Mamo. Afternoon. Is it just us now? Are we sure? Um, um, it looks like so. I'm still uh, removing other colleagues on the public platform, colleagues. Can we just allow? Okay, let me help you, ma'am. Uh, CD, please also help on your side. 